All right, Kyle, back in the summer, you called me the darkest guy on the program because I suggested that Vasily Podkolzin might be a bust. Well, the Vasily Podkolzin conversation has gotten a lot more negative. Hear what we have to say about him on the other side here on Locked On Canucks. Your Locked On Canucks, your daily podcast on the Vancouver Canucks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and thanks for hitting the play button on today's episode of Locked On Canucks. My name is Trevor Beggs, co-host of this delicious podcast called Locked On Canucks and also a Canucks Raider over at Daily High Vancouver. But before we dive into today's episode, we got to thank you, the listener, for tuning into Locked On Canucks. It's your team every day, more specifically, your Canucks every day. If you like what we're doing, go make sure you subscribe or follow for free on YouTube or wherever you listen to podcasts. Now, last night, the Canucks... Played another preseason game. They didn't lose this one 10 nothing. thankfully. <laughs> we got a few takeaways from the game that we want to discuss. Uh, of course, we got to want to go with the lead topic that we mentioned off the top, Vasily Podkolzin. And the problem with Podkolzin in Vancouver right now, it's a dilemma the Canucks got to solve. But before we do that, Kyle, I got to introduce you, my co-host. No dilemma between you and I, buddy. How are you doing today? Man, oh man, I'm doing good, man. The coffee is in my mouth and down my throat. Right? Hey, speaking of which, yo, somebody... Uh, Somebody said I overcompensated on the time on attack that I gave to people when it came to uh, how long I've been lasting in bed. Remember I said uh, a couple hours because my confidence is up? Yeah. Um, yeah, he's calling me out for that, saying that I'm lying to the people. And, yo, dude, after I said it, I, I did admit that I am partially am lying because in recent performances, it hasn't been the case. The confidence is not up. I got to give myself that, uh, that pep talk in the shower once again. Anyways, locked on Canucks. <laughs> your Canucks every day. Hey, we're just helping the people, okay? Hey, maybe I'm getting older and I need some erectile dysfunction medicine. That's why today's episode is sponsored by... No, I'm just joking. Not yet. No, it's, we haven't, it's, we haven't, it's, we haven't it's gone sponsored, there. It's, it's sponsored by confidence, okay? That's what you <laughs> need, confidence. <laughs> Kyle, I was going to tell you uh, my record for lasting in bed, but this is a family program, okay? Yeah. My record for lasting in bed, you know, 12 hours of sleep, okay, buddy? But if you want my real answer, I'll go tell you over on your network all week with Kyle Bowen. All week with Kyle Bowen is trending upwards, unlike Vasily Podkolzin, who is trending downwards. Uh, at practice uh, earlier this week was on basically the sixth line for the Canucks. Not oh. the fourth line, not the fifth line. He was on the sixth line, okay? Uh, on the second group at uh, practice there for Canucks, I, I guess, training camp preseason, whatever you want to call it. His stock is trending downwards, and this is a problem, right? We're talking about a mm -hmm. player who's in the fifth year Entering the fifth season, he's uh, since being drafted uh, in 2019. Kyle, what do the Canucks do with Vasily Podkolzin? Man, oh man, I think uh, well, well, a couple things. Okay, I know this is a family program, and I know I started started off the conversation talking about some lovemaking, but there's no such thing as a family without lovemaking. Okay, do the math. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, Podkolzin. Um, I think what they got to do, and this is uh. This is maybe against the culture and like what they're trying to do, but they need to give this guy a bit of a leash. They do. And I know, again, you have to be fair here and, and give people uh, the ice time that they deserve and the opportunities that they deserve. I think guys like Stanika and Baines have just been, have been working harder throughout camp and it's only been two preseason games, but those two played a lot better and were a lot more noticeable than a guy like Pod Colson. And again, in camp, reporters' tweets are saying that Dude, there's definitely a, a difference between effort level and just standing out in general between all those players. But this guy's your top 10 pick from 2019. Um, we saw some glimpses, and I feel as if for him to play a little bit more reckless, like what Tockett wants from him is that recklessness, that carelessness, just kind of being free out there, not thinking too much. They have to kind of pat him on the back. And again, that's in reverse order. It shouldn't always be the case like this. And again, anti-culture, you're trying to create a environment where no, like you come to the rink and you just bring it because you're in the NHL. You, you don't feel sorry for yourself, but they just need this guy to pan out. They need him to pan out. And I think I, I heard something from Thomas Grant. So maybe I'll insert the clip right here. The following is from Sportsnet 650. Because it's not that unique an experience for a guy trying to break into the NHL, but where it becomes unique for Pod Colson is those years he spent in the same situation yep. in Russia 
KHL, MHL, VHL, yeah, fourth line, healthy scratch, yeah. top line for the playoffs, sure. Like, this guy hasn't had predictable deployment since he was 15. Why has no one in this organization yep. just sat down and been like, hey, why don't we give him 30 games and we'll either find out at the end of it what he is or we'll know clearly what he isn't. Like, are you really not going to give him that look because you want to play Niels Amon and Jack Stadnika? And yeah, Durant was talking about how Pat Colson's ice hockey play in general from league to league throughout the last like four years from all the head coaches to not being in the lineup to being in the lineup with all these different teams has just created this uh, confusion in his mind. And it's hard to really grasp onto any, uh, any confidence. And I think the Canucks here need to, again, give him a bit of a leash, uh, whether that be, you know, playing the rest of the way in the preseason or just giving him the benefit of the doubt and starting him with a big club just to see what they have in this guy. I guess what I'm really trying to say is, yo, they need to take this guy to the bar, yo. Like, Tockett and Pedersen, like, they need to go to, what, the uh, banter room on Yelltown? Maybe parlor? Just go there, have a couple of brewskis, and just, like, psych this guy up. You get what I'm saying? Remind this guy who he is and see if that can kind of ignite some sort of confidence slash uh, create some sort of luck. Because, man, oh, man, it's not looking good for the guy. I, bro, I, I worry uh, about a guy like Pod Colson seeing guys like Stadnika and Baines play better than him. And on one end, you'd think that that would motivate him to do more, but it could also be defeating if you have a player that's insecure in his abilities right now. Yeah. Yeah, there's there's a lot to kind of unpack there, right? And I think confidence, like you said, Kyle, was really the main issue for Pod Coles in last season. Uh, now, Durant's kind of alluded to one other thing when I when I heard him talking yesterday too about you know Pod Coles and playing in the AHL, and I believe Durant's argument was that you know he doesn't see a lot of value for Pod Coles and playing in the AHL mm-hmm. because you know this is his fifth season after being drafted. They need to give him some time at the NHL. I mean, you know, again, Durant could be right, but I also think that players develop differently, and we talked about Pod Coles and having a bit of a rocky development curve, like a lot of these prospects that got drafted in 2019. And had to deal with COVID, right? I mean, Paul Colson was over in Russia Ooh. playing fourth line minutes in the KHL. Comes here as a good rookie season. Last year comes out slow to the gate, healthy scratch. Then he gets injured. Then he gets put in the HL. So last season was rocky on a number of levels. But I think what you want to see Paul Colson do right now, which he hasn't done, would be come into camp, play his ass off, work his ass off, and you know perform well. And that just hasn't happened so far. And uh, again, it's still early in the preseason. Don't want to write him off yet. But I don't think Pod Coles and being in the AHL is the worst thing in the world. Like, if he doesn't earn this spot, I don't think you got to pigeonhole him up into the lineup just to boost his confidence, right? Boost I his know. confidence by giving him lots of minutes in the AHL. It's not, it's not about making people feel good here. It's about earning your spot. And the NHL is the toughest hockey league to play in. Mm-hmm. I don't think he should just be pigeonholed into the Canucks lineup because yeah. he's a high-end prospect. I don't, I don't like yeah. that at all. So No, no. Like you Pod know what, Trevor? On this team. You know what, Trevor? Dude. Again, that's why sometimes they call me contradict uh, contradict Bowen, okay, uh, with the K, because I go back and forth a lot of times when it comes to things like this. Because on one end, you want to develop this dude the right way, and I, I, again, I'm not really confident in this dude getting sent down to the AHL and taking that as a lesson and him being accountable and him wanting more. I feel as if there's a chance that they that may defeat him. Uh, we're talking about a guy that over the last five years, post being drafted, like he hasn't been stand out in any of the leagues he's played in. You know. He's been in the middle at the best of times for his his on ice play, but again, I'm saying you know give him a bit of a leash. But I'm also saying on every other previous episode of Locked On Canucks, your Canucks every day, that the Canucks need to ice their best lineup, and there is no warm up period for this team this season. Every game matters for a team that needs everything to go right. Again, every game matters, and it's easier for every game to matter. Slash. Be more winnable if you're icing your best lineup. And maybe Pod Colson at his best has more skill than guys like Pod Coles, uh, that than Baines and Stanika and et cetera. Uh, but at the end of the day, man, if you're not competing and bringing something to the table, you're not doing anything. You're plateauing, you're neutral, and there's no room for that in any position of uh, on this roster. It's, again, it's the Vancouver Canucks. Everything needs to go right. There can't be one sleeper on this team. Like, they can't, they can't spend time this season. Uh, wasting minutes on a guy because they want him to develop. It's no, it's like we need guys to play games right away.
and play games the right way and be at 100% and be competitive. Yeah, I, I'll say this. I, I still firmly believe in Vasily Pod Colson and his NHL potential. I don't believe he's going to be a star. I don't think he's going to be posting 60-plus points or anything like that. I think he can be a good middle six player with a little bit of offensive upside, maybe kind of like that 20 goals, 40 assists at his uh, 40 assists, 20 goals, 40 points at his at his max. Um, but that being said, I, he's not there right now. I still believe in him to get there. But all I'm saying is don't just give this guy a spot on the team because he's a high pick. You know, if Dude. Jack said he could play better than him so far, and we're going to touch on that in, in the second segment here about some of the guys who have played well last night and, and throughout training camp so far. Dude. Um, but it's- if a guy like Sadika earns over Pod Coles, and Sadika's got to get that spot. Dude, it's been one preseason game. Are we jumping to conclusions? Maybe. Uh, we're just feeling away. Canucks hockey's all, all ba- Canucks hockey's too, right? back. Canucks hockey's back. You know, we're making uh we're making conclusions and based on that first performance. And also, dude, it's it's just the truth, man. When you follow all uh, I know they're media heads and people don't want to take them seriously, but yo, there's smart people in the city covering this team. And when you're watching training camp highlights and you're following this team from September on, and you at minimum, like I'm talking maybe there's been like three tweets. At most, saying, yo, Pod Colson's looking good. Like, there hasn't been any news about Pod Colson looking different. You've heard a lot about RST Baines. You've heard a lot about Stanika. You get what I'm saying? But there's nothing mm-hmm. on Pod Colson. There's nothing on this guy. And, bro, for years, you've been on the wagon. You've, I feel like you've said it from the jump. Like, yo, Pod Colson, at, at best, he's going to be a 40 point guy, like a 35, 40 point guy. And that pissed me off because of where he was drafted. It really did. But you can still be a 40 point guy and be effective every single game. And that's by showing up and competing and bringing something, something to the table and not just floating. And I feel as if there's a bit of an identity crisis with Pod Coles and his own game because he doesn't know what he is. And if you take it back to that Drance quote, quote that we just played, bro, if you're, if there's no certainty in like your structure or your routine as a hockey player throughout the hockey season, it's, you can forget who you are slash then be put in a position where you're trying to catch up to that during the season. And that's again, the NHL is not the time and place to do that. Now you said, put him in the NHL. I think I saw Chris Faber tweet that out as well. Like an article, like that's the best place for him to start the season. And it's like, okay, if they send him down to the AHL again, I need to it and Pedersen. Maybe it's not over some brewskis. Maybe it's some over some of that 420 magic, right? <laughs> like just have an accountability talk and, and a confidence boosting talk. And uh, Quinn Hughes, I got to bring the guy up too. like, dude, talk to the guy. Because a demotion, quote unquote, to the AHL could be detrimental. Like, it, dude, it's it, like based on how he's skating and how he's how we can kind of feel his energy on the ice on that first game. It's just like, dude, I don't know if he can take that uh, take that hit to his uh, to his psyche, to his ego, to his morale. And it's uh, it's scary, man. It's scary. Look, look at you, man, getting me all pessimistic, bro. Come on, man. What happened, man? What, I thought, it wasn't me. I thought Paul Colson was okay. going to be like okay. 25 goals, 30 assists. Yo, dude, is, is there a chance for this guy to be like, can you compare him like at best? Like, can we just be optimistic? Like, compare him to a player. Is he like an Alex Colon? Like, what, what, what is he at best if, if he reaches his potential? Oh, man. I'm trying to think off the top of my head here. Um, I, 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 <laughs> think about the Vegas Golden no, Knights. This, think this about is, is going to Colorado. This is gonna... This is going to stir people up, but kind of like Yannick Hansen at his peak. Remember Yannick Hansen almost pushed 20 goals one year? I, that's how I've got to see it for Pod Colson, to be honest with you. And Kyle, you're blaming me for being the dark guy. For our YouTube viewers, look at you, man. You're you're like in a haunted house right now. There's Bro, like you red light, black background. Great point, though. Like Yannick Hansen, like he brought it every game, most of the time. And he was, he was everywhere in the lineup. There was even points where he was playing with Henrik and Daniel. But at the least, Pod Colson has to get back to doing that somehow, some way. And that's bringing something to the table every game. And another guy who has to do that every game, and maybe we'll talk about him in a couple minutes, is Niels Hoaglander because he was invisible kind of last night. Yeah, well, let's let's maybe talk about Hoaglander and a couple of guy, other guys on the other side. But Kyle, before we do that, you know, you're talking about Pod Colson maybe needing some uh, Brucey's with the boys or some, uh, you know, 420 magic. I think he just needs... A good old fashioned breakfast in the morning. Let me tell you, man. At my house this morning, it was it was rough because there was no syrup for the maple for the no maple syrup for the pancakes. My wife ran out of her pumpkin spice coffee creamer. It was chaotic. But that's when I called DoorDash, okay? Because with okay. DoorDash grocery delivery, you can get what you want right when you need it, man. DoorDash, they saved my rear end this morning, okay? 
I trust DoorDash to deliver uh, to my favorite restaurants, and now you can get grocery delivery that actually delivers too, man. The grocery delivery is clutch, man. It's clutch. I got a couple kids, baby. I need that instant grocery delivery right to my house. And with thousands of grocery stores to choose from, you'll find the best in your neighborhood and boost your local economy with each and every order. That's what I'm talking about, DoorDash. Let's go. Okay. Get okay. 50% off your first DoorDash order with up to a $20 value when you use the code LOCKED at checkout. Limited time offer, terms apply. That's 50% off, up to $20 with no minimum subtotal, and zero delivery fees on your first order when you download the DoorDash app in the App Store and enter code LOCKED. Don't forget, that's code LOCKED for 50% off your first order with DoorDash. People, people, before we get back to the show, baby, I got to tell you that new episodes of Locked on Canucks will be available wherever you stream podcasts and on YouTube at 4.20 p.m. for no reason at all, okay? New episodes every day at 4.20 p.m. Again, wherever you stream podcasts and on YouTube. Let's get back to the show. Okay, okay. We back on Locked on Canucks. It's your Canucks every day, wherever you stream podcasts and on YouTube. Subscribe, leave us a comment, and uh, leave us a review if you enjoyed the show. We're doing our thing. And Trevor, tomorrow's the day. I was gonna I was gonna not tell you this and just leave it up to your loyalty to bring the truth to the table, but dude, I want to see a push-up video tomorrow, okay? It's just the truth. Do the most. Because we demanded that these boys show up to camp in shape. And uh, since we demanded that, uh, we told the people that we would do a little bit of a push-up challenge uh, to to match the energy, man. We got to put that out in the universe, right? If we're going to expect something from our boys, we got to look at ourselves in the mirror too and bring something to the table. Are we fit? Are we doing the most? Are we suffering from erectile dysfunction? What? What are we doing? Are we trying to do cock push-ups here? Can I even <laughs> <No>. say that? <laughs> hey, man, it is what it is. You watch it. Dude, it's hockey season, bro. You, Seattle's commercials are going to happen every 10 minutes. Does that okay. still happen anymore? I definitely remember that growing up. But uh, Good morning. Yeah, good know. morning. It's great. To, people are not eating breakfast in the morning. They're popping that Cialis and getting to work. Wow. Jeez, okay, <laughs> locked on Canucks. You're Canucks every day. Hey, speaking of, of getting to work... um, I guess the bare minimum is acceptable in Vancouver. The Canucks lose two to one in overtime, and uh, we're feeling <laughs> we're feeling great. We're feeling great. I know it's a preseason game, but we're feeling uh, so much better than we did on Sunday. And I think a lot of people were uh, content with the penalty kill and a guy like Teddy Bluger, who, bro, that dude, he looks smart out there. He looks smart out yeah. there. He looked a lot better than Niels Amon. And not not comparing both of their games. I'm just talking in general. The Canucks are going to have a better fourth line, a way better fourth line. And Niels Amon did his thing. He exceeded expectations last year, but they got a true NHL there. And uh, Teddy Bluger, a dude who looked confident, uh, confident, I'm sorry. I know it's game one. I know it's game one of the preseason for him, but we're talking about a guy who signed a one-year deal. You don't think he's going to bring that every single game and try to earn himself one of his last contracts? His, pretty much one of his last opportunities to learn, earn like a big, big contract, a four-year deal worth $8 million at the end of the year? I think he's going to bring it every Every game. Another guy who may bring it every game is Jack Stanika. And another guy on top of that is R.C. Baines. Uh, out of those two, I know you're from Surrey, but throw the bias away, okay? I know, you're, again, you're the inventor of the Surrey Jack. Trevor Beggs is that guy, t Dog. okay? Tanvir Beggs, that's, that's what the boys used to call this guy, okay? In Surrey, Sullivan Heights. Uh, who gets uh, who gets to start with the Vancouver Canucks? One of those guys. Stanika, Baines, if you had to pick one, who gets it? I'm I'm pretty sure it's Jack Stenica. Um, and I think it's twofold. You know, for one, RC Baines doesn't require waivers. Um, uh, Jack Stenica is actually a lower cap at two for a team like the Canucks, who's probably gonna push up against the cap. That being said, you know, those little points aside, I think it's just gonna go to the guy who earns it more. And, you know, as much as RC Baines is a great story, and I think he's gonna have an NHL career. Like I, I love his shiftiness out there. Mm-hmm. I love his battle level, I love his defensive awareness. Uh, obviously needs some work. Like he got deked by a, a no name Oilers blue liner last night. Gleason. So not, yeah. Ben Gleason, Ben yeah. Gleason, uh, not Tim Gleason, uh, <laughs> no relation to Tim Gleason. I don't think, mm-hmm. um, but Jackson, Nick, I think is just a better skater. Um, and they have similar skill sets aside from that, but I think it, Jackson, Nick is skating 
And probably he's just brought a bit more physicality to over Canucks training camp. So I think we'd all love to see R.C. Baines make it. I think he's still got a shot. The fact that he's was, you know, playing on a line with Kasuter and Garland in training camp. And, and last night, I want to say that line with Bluger, uh, Amon, and Studnika was arguably the Canucks' best line last night. Mm-hmm. Um, although that Baines, uh, Ratty, and Garland line had some moments too. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, between the two players, I'm, I'm, I'm going with Jack Studnika. Yeah, he's a great skater. He's brought a lot of energy to camp. I think he took... He took note of what Tockett said last year. I think I think Tockett did kind of call him out. Not call him out, but gave him a shot in the arm in the media last year. And I, I think he took it well, and he did the most. And uh, we talked about Teddy Bluger, you know, doing his doing the most this season, trying to earn another contract, and, and again, uh, do himself a big favor. It's the same with Stanika. I know they're at different age groups, but for a guy who had some pedigree going into the league, this is one of his last chances to really prove that he can do something. And the fact that he listened and did the most and is bringing this amount of energy, uh, again, training camp, he's been doing it in the practices. He's been doing it. And now in preseason, he's showing a lot of, a lot of high effort level on the daily. It's, it's a, it's a good sign. Now, RC Baines, you did mention all the things I was going to mention, I think it's a feel good story. I think there's a chance for the Canucks to kind of lean into that and maybe give the hometown dude a little bit of a break too. If he earns it at 110%, like this guy's really got to bring it. And there's a chance because his motor is so large, so large, and he's intelligent. Mm-hmm. Uh, dude, I think RC Baines is going to play like four games in the preseason this year. Like maybe he'll take a break today or maybe he'll, he'll play, but next week or start, starting Saturday, I think he gets every single game. And he gets a chance to earn a spot up until the very end of training camp. And I hope he does, man. Because, again, West Coast bias uh, on the program, Locked on Canucks. A big Surrey bias, too, okay? Trevor Beggs, Kyle Bowen, growing up in the, the Chimney Heights area, the Newton area, uh, the Fleetwood area. It means a lot, okay? Uh, R.C. Baines, no pressure. Just be the best hockey player you can be. But he can do a lot for the city of Surrey. A Surrey that's pretty infamous. And a Surrey that de- definitely does need a narrative change. And uh, it won't start in the government, okay? It's got to start with uh, the people. The people, and R.C. Baines is really one of those people. Uh, another dude who stood out for me, and again, didn't watch game one, but watched game two, was, I'm going to say the re- name wrong, okay? Atu Ratu, did I say it right? Yeah. Atu- yeah. Okay. R- R- Ratu's look good. Uh, I've liked looked, him so far in both preseason games. Dude, he's looked good. Good possessional player. I feel like he's intelligent. I think he covers a lot of ice, too, when he has to puck. And there's a chance, bro. There's a chance that this dude does get faster. I know people always do uh, critique the foot speed. It's not one of the strongest points of his game, but don't you think that's a trait that he could learn uh, maybe this season? Uh, It's kind of hard to do so during the season, but next offseason, something that he puts on his to-do list, because if he brings that to the table, I have no doubt in my mind that this guy is going to be an NHLer. Yeah, and honestly, I think he's arguably the Canucks' most important prospect. In an ideal in an ideal world, you have someone come up in the next two to three years who can uh, usurp JT Miller as a Canucks second line center. I don't know if Rodtu can be that guy. I mean, we did an episode in the summer uh, about how those two have you know very similar uh, point per game and trajectories at the same age. Um, but he's an, ex- an extremely important player for the Canucks in terms of his prospect pool. I think you know really good. They've had a strong preseason, a strong camp. Now go down to Abbotsford and just dominate, be a point per game player, and then hopefully yeah. he's kind of pushing for the third line center spot next year, and then maybe beyond in uh, a year or two after that. So really like what I've seen from him so far, and really mm-hmm. the other guy I wanted to point out, out last night that played really well, Casey DeSmith, man, that guy stood mm-hmm. in his head. I think the Canucks might have lost this game four or five on that Casey DeSmith. So just one preseason game, okay, but you know we I did kind of mention uh, a week or two ago, like maybe there's a bit of a battle between DeSmith and Martin. Like if Martin plays as well as DeSmith then, uh, you know, maybe it's a tougher conversation for Canucks management. But I have a hard time seeing that being the case. I mean, Smith was great in his first appearance last night. And, uh, yeah, Martin just seems to have fallen down the depth right now. Yeah, it is what it is. And the Canucks traded a third-round pick in that trade. There's going to be a, a little bit of pressure uh, from the whole team to make sure the Smith is the backup because that's not a good look for a team that's, you know, been a bottom dweller. It's been uh, that, that – uh, what's the quote again? Not to beat up a dead horse, but those two things. Why are we always collect- beating up dead horses, man? <laughs> I know. Unbelievable. Those two things collectively uh, keep being said year in and year out, right? Uh, trading picks and being a bad team doesn't make sense. And since that's the case, uh, DeSmith uh, probably does have the leg up 
in being the backup goaltender. I'll say another thing too about the preseason as well. And I know we're not going to see uh, the most stacked lineup today. Like we're probably going to see JT Miller, but we're probably not going to see Pedersen. We're probably not going to see Quinn Hughes, but I do hope during the, the next three preseason games after today's game that we do see both those guys, just the whole PP one unit playing every single game. Cause it matters to get those reps in, especially on the power plan. I mentioned this a couple episodes ago, right on that, uh, on that episode where we said Rick Tockett should follow the lead of Andy Reid of the Kansas City Chiefs, so, uh, Chiefs, okay? Because it matters. And look at what uh, look at what the Oilers did yesterday, okay? They iced a pretty solid top six, probably their PP1 unit, and they went like, I feel as if they scored no goals on the power play. No goals. They were pretty bad on the power play. But they're knocking out that rust. They're knocking out that rust prior to when the games actually start. And I hope the Canucks are taking notes because they're, there's going to be rust. There is. So get those guys together for the next three games. You don't have to play them 24 minutes, 25 minutes a game like they did with Quinn Hughes yesterday, but I would like to see that going into uh, the weekend and the rest of the preseason for the Vancouver Canucks. Uh, uh, Beg, do you got anything else to say uh, in, in segment two here? No, let's get to common corner. I do got some uh, somewhat breaking news on the other side, though. But we'll get to that on the what? other side here. Again, your Canucks every day. Appreciate you tuning into Locked On Canucks and some semi-breaking news on the other side. Okay, okay, you're back on Locked on Canucks. You're Canucks every day, bringing the energy and, and bringing, bringing whatever comes out of our mouths, okay? Because <laughs> I've realized we've done this show for, what, five-plus months, six-plus months. There's no prep. There's no prep. That Google Doc sheet, never read. Never read. Uh, we just uh, speak our minds and uh, do what we got to do, and we're going to watch the games, man. And uh, on that note, before I ask you the most important question of all time, I got to say, yesterday I watched a preseason game. I watched the preseason game while I'm doing work at the studio, while I'm designing merch for the boys at Don't Doze. Uh, I'm watching a preseason game, and it felt it felt right. It felt good. And most importantly, it didn't feel like work, even though we're doing this. So that addiction to the Canucks, I don't think it's Fugazi. It's back, and I feel like myself. And it's ironic how I felt that way yesterday, where I'm like, oh, sh- oh crap. I'm feeling like my old self again. I'm watching Canuck games. They matter. My stomach is feeling good. And we talked about Luongo yesterday too, which we'll get to in a couple minutes on Common Corner. So a lot going on, okay, in the universe. Are we living in a simulation? <laughs> I think so. Anyways, Begsy, let's get back to that question. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm, I'm doing all right, man. Engine close to the weekend. Uh, my wife's actually flying to Ottawa on Saturday. So I got a week of, uh, you know, dad daughter time coming up, although I do go to work full time. But, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to it, man. I, I, I freaking love my daughter. There you go, man. You better be watching, I don't know, like the Lion King instead of the six o'clock, seven o'clock preseason game against the Flames this weekend. Okay? No, no, no. We're watching preseason hockey together, buddy. Oh, we, we, watched, we watched the preseason game together last night while we were eating dinner, buddy, because my wife was out then, too. So. Uh, my she said something, something last night. I don't know what it flashed to, but I think it flashed to some fans in the stands. And my daughter's like, I like those hockeys. <laughs> oh, that's like, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> she's like, Can we go back to those hockeys? I was like, oh, oh, sorry, no I, I don't got PVR. We ain't that rich. Oh, uh, maybe man. we're locked on Canucks starts uh, paying some more bills here. Uh, let's get to some semi breaking news before we yeah, do comment it. quarter here. Uh, you know, want we want to keep this around 30 minutes, right? Because yeah. you know, we value your time and you know, we don't want the locked on uh, overlords breathing down our necks too much. Uh, the semi-breaking news is that, according to Elliot Friedman this morning, uh, Spencer Martin is on the trade block. So we just talked about him. I don't think it's any um, crazy revelation, but uh, never mind him pushing uh, Casey to Smith for starts. I think the Canucks are trying to find a way to trade this guy before tr- putting him down through the waivers. Um, because, you know, at this point, maybe they have too many goals in the organization, right? Even if they get rid of Martin, they have um, Archer Silovs and Nikita Tolopio. I think they want both those guys playing AHL games. Then Zach Salchenko is kind of your ECHL guy. Uh, can fill in if there's injuries. So uh, any chance Martin gets traded, or do you think this guy's going through waivers for sure? Who's trading for him? I mean, the Canucks acquired him for future considerations, right? Like, yeah, that so what is that? What, what is the future considerations? Is that like 2500 bucks ba- under the table? Yeah, it's, like, basically, what is it? it's basically nothing. It could be a Timmy's gift card. Oh, really? Yeah. Maybe, maybe Dunkin' $1? Donuts if it's in a... Well, we're Canucks are in Canada, so Timmy's gift card. Okay, okay. <laughs> No, no. Honestly, like, it, it could be anything. Like, it's 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 very vague. <laughs> I think Elliot reported last week that Colorado may be interested, and now he's reporting that he's actually on the trade block. Uh, not surprising, and also not big news. Okay, it's not yeah. big news. I, and I'll say this: it could be a conditional pick. Like, say Spencer Martin 
I, I think Colorado was a rumored destination. Like he mm-hmm. played with Colorado before, I believe he was drafted by Colorado. Um, they could use some goalie insurance. Frank Kuz has been kind of injured in the past. So maybe it's some, it, it could be like a conditional six if Martin plays like 15 NHL games or something like that. But mm-hmm. anyways, not big news. Doesn't really matter. Let's get to common quarter before we get out of here. Welcome to common corner powered by paraphrasing. Today's comment comes from our friend Jay. I think Kirk McLean was just as good as Roberto Luongo. If one goes up in the rafters, both go up in the rafters. Okay, people. Uh, we got to talk about this. And we talked about this yesterday. Yes, yesterday on the show, we talked about Roberto Luongo and the Canucks disrespecting him. Uh, potentially, maybe, possibly, possibly. I mean, a lot of people are saying it, right? This guy should have his number retired, yet they're putting him in the ring of honor right beside Matias Olin because <laughs> that's where Roberto Luongo, uh, the first ballot Hall of Famer, uh, belongs. Uh, and then we had a lot of people talking about Kirk McClain, okay? If the Canucks uh, were going to retire Roberto Luongo's number, they might as well retire Kirk McClain's too. Uh, the, the, the two are the same. People are saying that, right? The two are the same. One Stanley Cup Finals appearance, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, dude, are you serious? One's a first ballot Hall of Famer. One is Lou. One is the inventor of Twitter, uh, hockey Twitter. Dude, there's levels to this stuff, okay? There's levels to this stuff. I don't think Kirk McClain had anything to do with Roberto Luongo not having his number retired, okay? There's levels to this. Kirk McClain, he's cool here. He's dope here. Uh, maybe he has that one of the greatest saves in Stanley Cup uh, Finals history. That kick save was beautiful. Like, unbelievable. Uh, if there was yeah. an HD around that time, that highlight's been shown many times. But there's levels to this, okay? Kirk McClain had nothing to do with Roberto Luongo not getting his number put up in the rafters. Yeah, I, I I don't think so. I will say though, uh, to our commenters' defense, um, you know, Kirk McLean is like a legend around the city, obviously for what he did. But he's really active. He's been really active in the city ever since retiring. Like the guy's always around like charity events, mm-hmm. always around golf tournaments, always helping out different, uh, you know, charities in the area. Like even when I worked at the uh, at the newspaper here in Surrey, like I I ran across, I came across Kirk McLean on a couple of uh, a couple of occasions, just supporting various charities and stuff. So I think. You know, Luongo, who clearly wanted out of Vancouver and is very happy in Florida, uh, is a bit different than Kirk McLean, who's really cemented himself as a part of Vancouver, as a part of the city yeah. long term. So, again, I still think they both belong in the Ring of Honor. I don't think, like you said, I don't think they have a lot to do with each other. But just something worth noting, you know, um, we're talking about kind of like the legacy of both guys. Um, Kirk McLean definitely firmly, he's firmly a part of, you know, Vancouver. He is. And uh, not to poo-poo on Roberto Luongo even more, and I had that. I had that do comment, right, about my performance in bed, but he also talked about how I was blatantly d- disrespecting Roberto Luongo. How long did Roberto Luongo play with us for? Like eight years, you said? Eight seasons, is that the correct number? Oh, what's the what, what's the number? Uh, something around those lines. How many times did we make the playoffs under Roberto Luongo? Was it five times? Was it six times? And you got to keep into account that, again, the, the last two seasons of Roberto Luongo, really unpredictable, a bit of a circus, my contract sucks. Eddie Lack possibly starting over him. Uh, Corey Schneider possibly starting over him. Those things you got to take into account. I get it that he was one of the best premier athletes faces of our team and the league around his time when he was a member of the Vancouver Canucks. Uh, and 2010 was a big deal. And he did that, you know, where the Canucks played. But uh, I'm open to raising the bar and just leaving some room up there for just more. It's okay. It's okay. It is what it is. I don't I, I don't think uh the Canucks deserve to be like heavily scrutinized for this. It's just the truth. Yeah, I agree, man. And uh, you know, let's let's raise the bar in the city and let's update the listeners before we get out of here. I did talk about the semi breaking news of Spencer Martin being on the trading block. The most recent news, the Canucks just tweeting out that Spencer Martin has been assigned to Abbotsford uh for the purpose of going through waivers. Uh oh. so Spencer Martin has not he's not being traded, he is being waived. And we'll see if a team claims it. Um, because I think the Canucks probably have one too many goalies in the depth chart right now, if you ask them. Dude, one Casey DeSmith start. And I texted you, Darren. I was like, dude, this <laughs> yeah. guy looks this guy looks pretty good. And, yeah, you're right. It took 60, 61 minutes of Casey DeSmith to uh, end Spencer Barton's Canuck career. <laughs> and, and Okay, and then it's interesting how like the business of sports work. You're going into a preseason game, and you're kind of like, okay, Casey DeSmith, Spencer Martin – it's game two of the preseason. Maybe you're going to see Spencer Martin for like the the last period or the last 30 minutes, which is typical preseason uh, roster management. But maybe the the team knew that they're going to put this guy on waivers and let's not risk an injury. So, yeah, that's a semi-quarterly breaking news. 
here on Locked On Canucks, uh, your Canucks every day. Okay, a lot of talk about erectile dysfunction, a lot of talk about uh, those those final couple spots on this team. Uh, we didn't talk much about Cole McWard, but we did talk about him yesterday. Go check out that episode on Locked On Canucks because we do this every day for the people. Uh, Begsy, do, uh, do us all a favor and sign us out. All right, all right. Shout out to you for tuning into this episode of Locked On Canucks, whether you're an everydayer and occasional listener, or if this is your first time listening, we love you and we appreciate the heck out of you. Canucks playing another preseason game tonight against the Seattle Kraken. We'll have you covered with takes on what transpires in Seattle on the latest episode of Locked On Canucks. But we do got to get out of here. So I'm Trevor Beggs, that guy's Cal Ballard, and you've been listening to Locked On Canucks.